Hello, goalkeepers. As global health correspondent, my job is to seek out stories that will shape the future of human health and our survival. Whether it's efforts to contain Ebola in West Africa and now the DRC, or tackling drug-resistant TB in India, or vaccine hesitancy here in the US. I've seen firsthand that severe health threats are only ever overcome when people get together, coordinate, collaborate, share information, and commit to change. The accelerators we're announcing today are all wonderful examples of this. We heard earlier on Melinda's panel about some of the things that are undermining access to contraceptives. Our first accelerator is a new approach to exactly this issue in Ethiopia, where almost half of the country's girls are married before 18, and the pressure to conceive is extremely high an experience that is sadly common for many young women all around the world. So when Population Services International decided to face this challenge head on, they knew they'd have to take a different approach. And the approach that they hit upon is something called a Smart Start, and it was created with Ethiopian youth for Ethiopian youth. And here among us is one of the Ethiopian young people who helped make it all possible, Bitania Lulu Bahanu, hello. Um, tell us a bit more about the program you helped design and um, why it's seeing such incredible results. So um, what's very exciting and great about Smart Start is that it was designed by the people that it's for. Mm -hmm. um, so we have conversations with rural couple, with the men and boys included, and we set the goal, uh, they tell us the goals they have for themselves, they tell us, they share with us their dreams and the financial plan. So we help them understand the economic benefit of delaying their first pregnancies and um, spacing out the uh, subsequent babies. And we did, within just 19 months of implementation, we've managed to help 24,000 girls in the rural of Ethiopia to adopt modern contraception. Change can happen very quickly. <laughs> And so today, Britannia, uh, along with these incredible people sitting all around you, I understand you've got um, some new expansions to announce as well. Yes, we do. Uh, because of the astounding results that SmartStart is making, it's now being adopted nationally, thanks to the exciting partnership with the Ethiopian government and the additional funding from Children's Investment Fund Foundation. So it's going to be embedded in the healthcare system of the country, and it will impact over 500,000 girls in the next four years. It's fantastic. And there's more still. There's more. Um, with additional investment from philanthropists with Maverick Next, uh, Smart Start is going to design a program with a German NGO called DSW to create economic and empowerment opportunities for, you, for these uh, young married couple. And it's going to start in two regions in Ethiopia in May next year. That's fantastic. Well done on all your work. Uh, thank you, Britannia. And finally, beyond Ethiopia, Nigeria and Tanzania are also running programs similar to Smart Start. And today we are delighted to announce uh, the Nigeria program is increasing from three sites to 30. So that is a tenfold increase, which exemplifies the kind of change accelerators aim to make. And it's thanks to an investment of over $1 million from Gates Philanthropy Partners. And I think it's also very important to point out that this kind of program has the potential to reach all 23 million adolescent girls in the world without access to contraception. Population Services International is seeking new funding partners, country implementers, and young people, like many of the people here in this room, to work with in countries across Sub-Saharan Africa and in Asia as well. So do get on board if you can. Right, everyone, let's uh, have a big round of applause to all of those partners. Please stand up uh, and accept this standing ovation. And as a further recognition, I'm also very proud to introduce a message from a woman who is an African hero and whose leadership as Ethiopia's first female president is changing the aspirations of girls there. President Zahalwerk Zaudi. Greetings to all. While I can't be with you today, I'm so happy to join you by video to express the Ethiopian government's commitment to achieving the SDGs 
and our pride in being a part of the innovative work and extraordinary partnerships generated by goalkeepers. The programs being adopted in my country will help ensure that the lives of all our citizens continue to improve, in particular the lives and futures of our adolescents and youth. I'm proud to say there are many transformative programs that are providing young married couples with life planning and access to contraception, positively impacting the lives of young women today and their children tomorrow. These programs are reshaping the aspirations and futures of our girls and young women. So today, we're excited to celebrate Ethiopia's progress with you, and I'm grateful to all you goalkeepers for the work you're doing to help chart our planet on a better path. Thank you so much to President Zahelwerk Zaudi and to Britannia as well. Now, on to accelerator number two. And this is something that um, really has had an impact on me personally because I had my first child, a little boy called Rion, just 18 months ago. In fact, he is here in the room over there reading a very important book. <laughs> Hello, he's a little mini baby goalkeeper. <laughs> Um, but because I live where I live in London, during my pregnancy, I had access to vitamins and minerals along with good nutrition to keep me healthy and to allow Rion to develop as optimally as possible. It's what every mother, no matter where they live in the world, wants for their child. But most women in low to middle income countries don't actually get that chance. Luckily though, things are changing. And you may have noticed from today that Bill Gates loves a good chart. <laughs> and he famously said that this one is his favorite. And you can see why, that lovely downward curve. But 5.8 million children dying every year before they reach their fifth birthday is still clearly way too high. So accelerator number two aims to make this chart even more beautiful as we speed towards 2030. Poor maternal and child nutrition is the underlying cause of almost half of all these remaining preventable deaths. It also leads to stunted physical and mental development in children. It's hard to find a starker example of inequality. But what if mums at risk of malnutrition had access to the same prenatal nutrition that women like me and many of you here um, have in high income countries? The Healthy Mother, Healthy Babies Accelerator plans to get multiple micronutrient supplements known as MMS, a tiny prenatal wonder pill, into the hands of mothers who need it most by bringing together nearly $50 million in financial and in-kind contributions to increase supply, demand, and delivery of MMS worldwide. Over the next three years, this accelerator will reach more than 17.5 million pregnant women and their newborns in multiple countries, including Myanmar, Indonesia, and Bangladesh. Sometimes, progress is a question of the right people and partners taking action from their respective points of influence to do the right thing. This is exactly what these 12 partners on the screen behind me are doing, challenging a bureaucratic norm to change the odds. Some of them are in this room today, and you deserve to be applauded. Okay, now to our final accelerator announcement of 2019, and it's an issue that affects probably every single person in this room, mental health. One in four people will experience mental health problems in their lifetime, and that means you or someone you know will need support at some point. The term mental health encapsulates a vast number of conditions, which are often misunderstood because so many people suffer in silence due to shame and stigma. I'm sure many people in this room have personally struggled with their own mental health or experienced it with a friend or a colleague or a relative. I, I know I certainly have. Today, I'm going to come and find another one of our goalkeepers, uh, Victor Ugo, who's in the uh, audience for us. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm doing good. 
Okay. Okay. So you've been um, leading the charge for mental health provision uh, in Nigeria as well as countries uh, all around the world in your Speak Your Mind campaign. Just tell us about the Global Mental Health Accelerator. Thank you. Um, this accelerator is bringing together governments, civil society groups, um, private sector and philanthropists to make sure and to speed up efforts to make sure that everyone everywhere has access to mental health services. Starting with global businesses, today we are proud to announce a global mental health partnership between the Speak Your Mind campaign and HSBC. You should talk for that. <laughs> yeah. So this will launch a mental health education program um, available to all of its 238,000 employees, and uh, which, is, which, is, which is found across 65 countries and territories, which is amazing. Um, this program has already been started by its employees, but what's more and what's more interesting is that HSBC plans to share what they are learning and what they have learned with other employers who might be in this room um, who are willing to, to, to make mental health a priority for their employees as well. It's to make people more open in their workplace and, and opening up elsewhere as well. So that's what companies are doing. What about governments? Ah. Well, in many countries across the world, including mine, Nigeria, um, legislation still exists that prevents people from assessing quality mental health services. Um, but with the help of Accelerator Partners here today and the Speak Your Mind campaign, we are beginning to see tangible and incredible country successes, including in countries like Tonga and India. Um, as of today, we are very happy to announce that um, the government of Sierra Leone is going to review the Lunacy Act of 1902, which has led to the involuntary incarceration of people living in mental health conditions like myself. And um, by next year, a new bill is going to be taken to parliament to, to vote on, on ensuring and guaranteeing that everyone and every citizen in Sierra Leone has access to mental health support. Great, wonderful. <laughs> Definitely deserves a round of applause. And you're also launching the first ever independent monitoring and accountability mechanism for mental health. Tell us a bit about that. Yes, indeed. Um, this is a partnership across civil society groups and um, an academia called the Countdown to 2030. Um, this is going to provide crucial and up-to-date data that will help governments to better understand the level of need for mental health support in their countries and will help investors, um, funders who are most likely in this room, to direct funding towards supporting mental health services. Um, it is great because the system is, is going to be open access and available for use by governments, researchers, policymakers, campaigners and change makers across the world because Obviously, understanding the scale of the problem, it is it's so vital um, if we are to find and invest in the solutions. Okay, Victor, thank you very much. We're already seeing the impact that funding is making. So it's brilliant. We've heard there about um, three ways to help make mental health available uh, for all. And the remarkable partners who have made this accelerator possible are here in this room. We would love you to stand up if you're able to and you would like to and accept uh, this round of applause. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Well, I hope you've seen yourselves um, in these accelerators and that you're left feeling powered up and inspired uh, to join forces with one of them or perhaps work with goalkeepers to launch your own accelerator uh, for next year. This is about you, about uh, collaboration to drive impact and to drive change. So let's see one of you on this enormous, very impressive screen here uh, next year. To play us out, I am delighted to welcome back O.G. Ifedura to sing You Will Be Found. Thank you very much. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and nobody was here? Well, let that lonely feeling wash away. Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay. 
Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And oh, someone will come running And I know they'll take you home Even when the dark comes trashing through when you need a friend to carry you And when you're broken on the ground You will be found So let the sun come streaming in Cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again Lift your head and look around You will be found